Hey everyone, welcome to week 37. This is day three, Wednesday. This is our ongoing simpler week. So we've painted with nine premixed colors on Monday. We painted with eight premixed colors on Tuesday, yesterday, Martes de Español. And for today, we're gonna paint with seven. So we'll see how we do. We have to see if it gets any easier, if it gets any harder. Honestly, for me, this week is hell. So <laughs> it's always gonna be hard. So we'll see how we do. Okay, let's get started. This is the third day of our simpler week. Now remember, what we're trying to do is to paint with pre-mixed batches of paint, but we're also, and this is the uh, bigger challenge during this week, we're also attempting to, as the week goes by, mix one batch of paint less than the day before. So we started with nine pre-mixed uh, batches of color on Monday. For Spanish Tuesday, we mixed uh, eight little piles of color. And for today, we're gonna mix seven. Now, what have I learned? Because this is really, for me, a completely new experience. I mean, this is such a simple thing, so I feel very weird, you know, after 20 some odd years of painting, saying, okay, this is a very new experience for me. And honestly, this is a very simple thing. Like, pre-mixing colors is as fundamental as you can get with painting. So. It shouldn't be something out of the ordinary for me. It shouldn't be something foreign, but I don't do it. I just feel so comfortable with my open palette and mixing with my brush that I've just never really wanted to understand color any other way, to understand how to interpret color through paint any other way, because I feel that that manner of solving color in my palette is just so close to my sensibility that I just feel that I don't need to search any further. But as we've seen during this year, really, the purpose of this project is to push ourselves in directions that for other people may be the most ordinary of actions. I'm sure there's painters out there that have done both, that have mixed with their brush and have also mixed pre-mixed paint uh, with a palette knife on their palette. And that this exercise seems like the easiest thing in the world. Uh, for me, it isn't. You know, I have no shame in admitting that I've grown so accustomed to understanding color in such a particular way that if you take me out of that painting practice, I just feel completely naked. I feel like I have no clue what I'm doing. And I have noticed about myself that I don't necessarily understand how to relate one color to the other. When I see these kind of tiles of paint, you know, these these little pre-mixed uh, batches of paint, I don't know how they are going to relate to each other. I can presuppose how their relationship is going to work based on my past experience, but the fact that I don't see it, and by don't see it, what I mean is that the fact that I don't see them kind of touching each other but that they are their own little island on the palette feels so strange to me because I have grown to understand that color actually activates once it comes with contact with another color, once it's surrounded by other colors. But by itself, you know, like this little island, it kind of means nothing. It's a very, very abstract um, notion. And I think on Monday, I was saying how I think the toughest part in all of this, all of this for me, is to try to reorganize those colors into an image where they are going to activate, where they are going to generate like a choreography, relationships between each other. And I have to try to pre-visualize it in my brain and say, yes, that's going to work. That's actually close to my intent. You know, that's what I wanted to paint and hope that it is going to work. But honestly, I, I do feel that there is still a sense of disconnect. Now, what does that mean? It means that this exercise, you know, even if it's very simple in its um, basis, you know, it's a very fundamental exercise. It is tough, you know, <laughs> it's a reminder that there are no kind of simple things in painting, and especially those that have to do with the very fundamentals of painting, those are so hard to grasp and those take a lifetime to try and understand that it is very humbling when, when I see myself just trying, trying to, in a very abstract fashion, 
Imagine a painting out of the relationship of nine colors or eight colors or today, seven colors. To me, it is bewildering uh, doing something like this. It really does challenge me and it activates areas in my brain that I, I think were dormant for many, many, many years. Uh, but it's amazing. I actually enjoy these sort of exercises profoundly because I feel that they are tapping into something that I didn't know about myself. And even though I may struggle, like I've noticed that I've struggled in the past couple of days and I foresee myself struggling in the next couple of days, even though I suffer through it, I'm realizing that I'm learning a ton about myself. I know that I'm learning about the exercise. I'm sure that if I did this for a month, I would eventually feel more comfortable with it. And that to me would be no surprise. I, I feel that the practical part of painting is one that actually gives back to you. So if you put your effort in, if you reflect upon what you're doing, you're gonna get better, you know, period. That's a super easy equation. And it's something that is easy to understand and easy to accept. And the exercise itself is actually saying, yeah, if you put in the hours, you know, I'll give back as much as you put into me. So that doesn't surprise me. Um, what does surprise me is the fact that what is giving back to me now, which is, you know, if you really think about it, still a very early moment of the exercise where I'm not really feeling like I can effectively solve a painting the way I would want to. Even at this early stage, I feel that there is a reciprocal quality between my effort and the exercise of painting. So what I have noticed about it, and I think I hinted at this on Monday, and I spoke about it yesterday also in Spanish Tuesdays, is that I recognize the painter that I am, and it's probably even more evident when I'm doing this exercise than when I have my open palette. When I have my open palette, I feel that there is this universe of possibilities. It really does feel boundless. I mean, obviously, the parameters of a palette are binding. They are finite. You know, there's only so many possibilities that you can mix depending on the colors you choose to compose your palette with. So my palette being actually somewhat small is only going to be able to create a finite number of permutations. And I accept that and I know that, but even even when I'm aware of those limitations, I actually think that my possibilities are boundless. I see my palette and I see the universe. So I never get that feeling of anxiety or constraint when I see my palette. I feel like I can paint everything. I can paint anything. And when I say that, I hope people don't misunderstand me. It doesn't mean that I have such a high ability that I can paint anything. Oh, no, it's not about that. It's that I believe that I could access everything through that palette, that I would be able to create relationships, to generate relationships through the colors that are available to me in this palette, so much so that I could speak about anything and everything. So that's what I mean, like I can paint anything with this. I'm not really challenging somebody to say, well, not really, you know, you couldn't really mix this particular color. So that means you can't paint this particular thing. No, 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 I, I'm not talking about that. I think that that's a very reductive way of understanding a palette. I'm speaking about the possibilities of interpretation that are available to me through that palette. And I feel that those are more than enough more, more than enough for me to really put myself up against any problem or any intent that I could have at the beginning of a creative act of painting. I feel like I can solve this. And I believe that if I am not able to solve this, it's not my palette's fault. It's actually my own fault and my own shortcomings. So I've never felt really restrained by this palette, but this is the cool part. When I'm pre-mixing, I'm realizing that my own tendency to work within very specific areas of the palette just surfaces a lot and becomes incredibly evident. And I was saying on Monday how I think what I'm doing almost always is just finding this joy in generating a relationship of color that fits in a very compressed scale of value and fits within a very compressed also hue range. I'm seeing that when given the chance to interpret something through these pre-mixed little mounds of paint, 
you know, these little batches of paint, I have a tendency to say, okay, let's compress my value scale. I may have an accent of saturation or contrast. So I am aware that I would be sensitive to either one of those two. But usually what I love is just to say, I'm going to put these colors right next to each other. I'm going to try to mix these colors and make them feel that they're so analogous, they're so close to each other that there's going to be this almost natural harmony between them. And I feel totally comfortable with that. I just feel that that's where I reside in, that that's where my sensibility really, really is activated. That's what moves me. So it is becoming super evident when I have to um, try and generate these relationships in my palette, this weird thing happens where in my brain, I think I am kind of shifting my value and I'm making colors that would have a substantial difference in value when in fact it's probably like a, maybe sometimes a step, maybe half a step, at most like two, three steps between them, not even I think. And it is amazing. It is actually pretty amazing because I'm realizing, wow, this is something that I know I do, but I'm not really aware that I'm doing it while I'm pre-mixing and it's just kind of surfacing. And I think that that's kind of beautiful because that's who I am. You know, I don't see that as a mistake. Again, I don't see that as a shortcoming, as those shortcomings that I just talked about when it is my own inability to identify what I have to do and what I have to adjust in my palette that didn't help me uh, bring the painting closer to the, my intent. No, this is actually something that I feel is not an issue. This is not a problem. This is not a thing where I say, oh, I got to do this better. I, I have to make this exercise. I have to solve this exercise more effectively. Not at all. I am, I'm actually kind of coming to terms with myself through this exercise and noticing that it's, it's pretty amazing. You know, it's like, this is me. Like my painting is coming out of somewhere. <laughs> It, during this very simple, very basic act of pre-mixing color, pre-mixing these, these very solid tiles of color that I just don't feel a ton of connection with. And it's incredible how even though when I see this flat color, this flat result, this very solid, clean result of mixing two or three colors together, when I see that color, I'm like, yeah, no, that's kind of dead for me. That's that's not really what I wanted. You know, I, I love the vibrancy in my color. I love when there's uh, traces of whatever two or three colors that are part of the recipe of that color. Let's call it that. I love to kind of have a feeling for them. It's almost like you're tasting uh, this incredible recipe and you can taste every single one of those ingredients. I love when painting behaves like that, when, when you mix colors and you can actually kind of sense the way the colors that make up that mix are still very much so present in that mix. When I see the flat, very clean result of that mixture, I feel that some of that is sacrificed. I feel that some of that is gone. And it almost feels like a loss to me. So it's very strange how I'm coming to terms with saying, wow, this is not really what I expected. This is almost like a lesser version of what I understand two or three colors coming together is supposed to mean, is supposed to be. And yet through this exercise that at that moment I'm deeming less of an exercise, I'm still able to access the core of who I am. When I evaluate the final painting, I'm like, yeah, that for some reason feels like a painting that I would do. That feels like an image that I would resolve in that particular way. So I'm not really betraying myself while I'm doing this exercise. And it's crazy because even though I feel that there is no connection with something or that there is a space between my sensibility and the act of solving color this way, it almost seems to not matter. My sensibility seems to say, yeah, this doesn't really matter. I'm going to show up. Even though you think there's no connection, I am going to show up. And it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And it has to do with something that I've always kind of believed in, that I've always told people. And I know for many people, this doesn't really make sense. And it's not the answer that they want to hear. But when a lot of people ask about finding a style, which I honestly don't really like that word, I much rather refer to it as manner, referring to the old maniera, to the old Italian term uh, maniera. I think that that 
encompasses a lot more that's a far more kind of complex term that not only speaks of how something is superficially solved but what is underneath the ideals that are underneath the act of trying to solve a problem that ultimately lands into this kind of visual configuration of an image but i understand what people you know refer to when they ask about style so uh, when when people ask me in particular about it and they say, how do you get there? What do you do to try to find your own style? I always tell people, you don't. You don't look for it. You just try to solve problems. And in trying to solve those problems, then, you know, eventually you're going to have a good enough relationship with your materials that the work of those things together, that the work of your intent plus your relationship between you and your tools, it's going to give you the opportunity to access this space where you can actually solve something. Now, this is the cool part. You don't really need a ton of ability. You just have to be aware of the relationship that you have with your ability. There's a ton of artists that I absolutely adore that don't necessarily have the most incredible ability. Those things don't matter. What they do have is self-awareness. What they do have is they understand who they are, they understand their relationship with their tools, and they understand what they can say through that relationship that they have with their tools and how that relationship amplifies their intent, how that relationship actually gets them closer to what they want to say. So you don't really, really need ability, you know? Ability is always fine, it's welcomed, but I've always thought that ability is sometimes a bit of an obstacle. So it can be a wonderful anchor and it can keep you in place and it can keep you grounded, but it's an anchor nonetheless. So what I've noticed through this exercise is that I don't really have the necessary knowledge to approach this exercise. I don't think I have the experience to understand how to premix paint effectively, but for some reason, who I am shows up. So if you don't look for things, but if you're in the right place with the right mindset, if you are reflecting honestly upon what you're doing, you know, whoever you are is going to show up. Whatever you believe in, however your sensibility was shaped, that is going to show up. And that's incredible. And that's, in the end, you know, what people superficially call style. You know, that's what is in the very, very surface of the image that you produce. And unfortunately, that's what a lot of people find most attractive. But underneath it all, you know, that's what we're concerned with. You know, those things that are actually helping, you know, that tiny little veil of appearance be the one that is presenting itself outwardly to the observer. We should be concerned about all the ugly stuff that is going on underneath and all the hard work of all the little people that are propping that nice superficial facade up. We shouldn't really be concerned about what something looks like. Uh, that doesn't matter. Today was amazing and I'm super grateful because uh, that's me, you know. I was I was painting Tom Croft again. Wonderful painter, absolutely wonderful guy. I actually feel that because I am painting him, I have this freedom. You know, there's nothing that's tying me down. There's nothing that's holding me back. There's nothing where I'm going to feel like, oh, I shouldn't really draw him or her this way. I shouldn't give them these proportions. They would be pissed if I portrayed them like this. No, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't really matter when I'm painting, you know, painters that I am uh, close with. And I think that this was the case today with Tom again. This was an act of faith because if you saw how the painting kind of came to be, and I don't know if you've noticed, but I actually give myself the opportunity to have a drawing underneath to serve me as some sort of underlying structure. If I didn't have that, I would feel very, very lost if I have to be honest. So I, I do have my drawing and that gives me like some sense of footing. But when I'm putting color down, everything goes to hell because now all I see is these little bits of color that just don't do anything by themselves. And only after, you know, a couple of hours when when they start generating relationships, I can kind of have a sense of what the painting is actually looking like, which does not happen when I paint with an open palette. I am very very prone to quickly wanting to see my painting to, to understand what my painting is what is it that I'm trying to solve and that's why if you guys have seen me paint 
I am very quick to block something in. I don't want to waste time and I want to see it. And with this, unfortunately, there's no way I can see it. There's no way I can say, yeah, that's where my painting is headed. So again, it almost feels like this blind act of faith and uh, that gives me anxiety. But but it was, it was very cool. I think it's a very, very strange painting today. And I was very happy that I let myself let the paper kind of breathe through so many of these places. I actually made one of the uh, pre-mixes very, very close in value to the value of the paper. So I don't feel like I'm cheating when I'm when I'm letting the uh, paper uh, shine through. I'm letting these empty spaces of, of paper just kind of come through. They really feel like they are part of the image. So I don't feel like I am not painting something. I feel that they activate and they feel part of the painting. But this painting is very abstract, it's very flat. It's very, very strange. It's hard to understand how all these colors are configuring form. And I think it takes like a second to see it. But once I saw it, I was like, hell yeah. You know, I really, really like this. And I'm really digging this exercise. This is so cool that this door has opened up for me to understand that even though there is control to this exercise, I was equating control to making a cleaner, clearer painting but I realized that I can actually be super expressive with my color choices and not sacrifice that expressive quality that I always tied to an open palette and mixing with my brush. I'm very happy that I'm seeing that I can do these weird paintings and that I can access them through this manner of mixing color that I don't have a connection with. That's incredible. I mean, painting is incredible. Painting almost goes beyond painting. and and. I feel that that's absolutely magical. And I've been a little stingy with sharing with you guys wonderful artists uh, through this week. So let's get to it. I think one of the brightest and most exciting artists, I mean, he does painting, drawing, sculpture, animation. So he's just like this renaissance man absolutely incredible painter i feel matt bollinger he is insane he is incredible i mean i have very seldom seen somebody have this ability to create a world where every part seems to understand that it is part of the makeup of this bigger universe and i think his paintings are like these windows to this bigger universe and every single one of those characters, every single one of those spaces, every single one of those landscapes, those interiors, those objects, every single one of those things. I mean, Matt has this ability to understand that they have to be true to the essence of that universe. It's almost like there's art direction there that is just insanely brilliant. And in terms of, of painting, you know, me as a painter, I just... Oh my God, I'm just so moved by the things that he does with uh, with color and the relationships he creates with color. Again, you know, I feel I've seen a ton of paintings in my life. I, I feel I, I know how to recognize possibilities in a palette. But when I see some of Matt's paintings, I'm like, how the hell did he mix that brown violet or that, you know, pink gray? It's just incredible. I mean, he makes it work. He gives his paintings so much character that, ugh. How could I not be in love with it? Again, I think he's one of the most exciting artists right now, and, and he's really amazing. I really do invite you guys to see, particularly if you want to start with his animations, ugh, you can sense the undertone that is present in his paintings right there, and and they, they do feel alive. You kind of see the beating heart of this universe when you see his animations. So amazing, incredible artist. So I can't recommend him enough. Um, but anyways... You know, th those are the sort of people that I look up to when I say I want to be able to accept the reality of this expressive quality and say that is present in who I am and it's going to be present in my painting regardless of what I do. For example, in Matt's case, he can do a collage or he can do a painting and they both feel exactly the same, like he is going to show up. And I hope that I am showing up you know, regardless of the nature of how I'm mixing paint. And I think that that's a very cool thing. So that was seven premixed colors for today. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to have six colors. We're going to see how we're going to do. And I feel that there is this artist that I absolutely adore that is creeping into the nature of this exercise and I'm feeling him. It's almost like I'm getting a cold, you know, I'm getting this itchy, runny nose. But this is like a good cold. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> but I think this artist is actually surfacing and is showing up. 
And even though he may not show up tomorrow, I think that by Friday he's going to make this appearance in my painting. And I can't help it. You know, this is just love for the people that came before me. And this is my way to pay um, homage to those brilliant painters of the past. So I have a feeling that, you know, this guy is going to show up on Friday. So we'll see how it goes. But that's going to be uh, tomorrow and Friday. So I hope to see you guys then. Thank you. Bye.